Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back to my Instagram Live series where I talk about all things related to nutrition. Um, I had taken a break for the holidays, but now I'm back. Um, I am ready to jump into 2021 and to help you all reach your health goals, whatever they may be. Um, so, you know, most people right now are talking about goal setting. Um, I did that in December, so if you want to go back and uh, look at my um, Instagram live videos about you know how to goal set, how to change healthy eating patterns, um, you know that was all I covered that all in December. So I am jumping off this or starting this year with um, talking about something that is an important. Uh, vitamin for inflammation, and that is folate. So uh, this week is actually Folic Acid Awareness Week. So I'm going to be talking about folate, its role in autoimmune disease management, and why you should be focused on getting enough folate in your diet. Um, so for those of you who don't know me and this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Annie Rubin. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist um, and owner of Annie Rubin Nutrition, which is a pri my private practice that I run um, now virtually out of my home in Palo Alto, California. So I primarily work with um, adults struggling with a host of symptoms from um, uh, both underlying inflammatory and autoimmune conditions. Um, we know for those of you who have an autoimmune condition or you know systemic inflammation, you can have a lot of challenging symptoms and side effects of that, including pain, fatigue, digestive challenges, and an overall reduced quality of life. So in my work with clients, I really help them implement a personalized nutrition roadmap that's designed to improve mobility, um, concentration, energy levels, and to ultimately lead a vibrant and fulfilling life because that's really all we all want, right? Is to be happy and feel good and um, just be able to do things that we want to do. So, um, you know, many of us, if you're a mom, you took folic acid when you were pregnant and that was kind of, you know, the main reason why you take a prenatal vitamin is to get enough folic acid to prevent, uh, you know, birth defects. Um, but I want to know if anyone has continued to take either folate or folic acid, um, and, or, you know, or are you taking one now and, you know, what you take. So, uh, drop me a comment, let me know. Um, and I'm just, you know, curious to see what people are doing for their supplementation. Um, so before I jump in, I just need to attach my normal disclaimer that this video is for, um, the information in this video is for, I. Uh, informational purposes only. Um, it's not the substitute for the diagnosis, treatment, or care or disease by medical provider. Um, this is for, you know, your information. And, you know, these are things that you can bring up to your doctor or health professional when you're questioning and want to know more about your health and how you can improve it. So obviously, please consult your, your doctor, or your, you know, whoever you see for your medical advice, um, please consult them before making any changes. And especially I'm going to be talking about some supplementation and, and that is also very important to bring up with your doctor and to tell your doctor that you're taking supplements. Um, super, super important. So please make sure that you're always doing that. Okay. So the first topic we're going to talk about is folate. What is folate? Folate is one of the many B vitamins that has an important role for keeping us healthy. Uh, folate, it's, uh, it helps with uh, DNA and RNA synthesis. So DNA is essentially where your genes are coded and where they come from. Um, so you need folate for that to happen properly. Um, you also need folate for proper cell division. So remember the cells in your body are constantly dividing and multiplying as other cells die off. Uh, so in order for that to happen properly, you need folate. Um, folate also helps with something called amino acid metabolism, um, which is essentially converting uh, an amino acid. So your proteins, um, like protein that we find in your, you know, food. So like animal protein, like chicken, fish, beef, or your, you know, your muscles also have protein in them. Um, it so your proteins are made up of amino acids, and folate helps convert certain amino acids into other either amino acids or compounds that your body needs to uh, essentially function. So those are kind of the major important roles of folate. 
Um, it is found in a number of foods, including uh, you know, your dark leafy green vegetables, your nuts, beans, peas, seafood, eggs, and dairy. Um, but it's it's pretty plentiful. I always think of folate as like your in your spinach and your kale and all your leafy green vegetables. Um, so if you if your diet includes those, that's fantastic. That's how you're getting your folate. So folate, another you know term that we've kind of uh, paired with folate is folic acid. Um, it's not actually the same thing. So folic acid is a synthetic form of folate that you typically find in supplements and fortified foods. Um, initially, it was thought that you absorb folic acid more efficiently, so your body can use it. Um, it's easier It's easier to use versus folate, which has to go through several conversions in order to, to put it into a form that your body can use. Um, but that actually may not be the case. So there was a, a study done where they looked at, um, you know, folate absorption in, in humans, and um, it happened to be slower than, or folic acid, sorry, in humans, and it happened to be slower than what they thought. So, um, you know, folate may be kind of the way to go in terms of, uh, you know, again, I always recommend that people get their vitamins and minerals through food. So um, if you're getting enough leafy greens and nuts and seeds and beans and eggs and dairy, then you're probably, you know, doing a good job of getting enough folate. Um the other thing to kind of throw in the mix is that if you do have something called a MH or MTHFR mutation, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, you may have a harder time using folic acid. Um, so again, that's something that we'll we'll talk about too. So there, there's kind of a funny story about folic acid. So when the U.S. first started um, processing and refining wheat, a lot of folate deficiencies started showing up because when you refine and you process any type of food, um, you're essentially removing, you know, especially wheat, you're essentially removing all the vitamins and minerals from them. So um, instead of, you know, encouraging people to eat more whole grains and, and plants, um, they added folic acid to refined foods to make up for what they stripped out. So again, another reason why eating whole foods is, is really important. Okay, so how are folate and inflammation linked? So folate plays an important role in regulating um, amino acid metabolism. So, um, and specifically, it helps the conversion of um, an amino acid called homocysteine um, to something called methionine. So those are two amino acids, and folate helps that conversion. Um, and this, this conversion, it's called a methylation reaction. And that will be important when I talk about MTHFR. Okay, so there, if there's not enough folate in your body, this conversion does not happen as efficiently as it needs to be. And then, so if you can't convert your homocysteine to methionine, your levels of homocysteine start to build up in your body. So high levels of homocysteine is actually a risk factor for, for heart disease um, and it can trigger other inflammatory disorders such as diabetes and inflammatory bowel disease. So um, that's why it's important to make sure that you are getting enough folate in your body so that that conversion can happen. Um, folate also acts as an antioxidant. Um, so this antioxidants remove free radicals from your body. So free radicals are these charged particles that are bouncing around causing cellular damage. And you don't want that to happen because you don't want things to be damaged in your body. So that's why it's important to have a diet rich in antioxidants to kind of pick up those free radicals and, and you know, neutralize them, so to speak. Um, so when you have inflammation, you likely have more of these free radicals bouncing around. Um, so having an adequate folate status um, helps remove these free radicals from circulation to prevent cellular and DNA damage. Okay, so now I'm going to jump into um, MTHFR and um, talk about, you know, what it is and is it something that I should be or you should be concerned about. And I feel like I'm totally opening a can of worms here because this is a very complicated topic. It's not straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to give you some basic, basic information. Um, and, you know, this may be something that I talk about, you know, in another video later on, but... Um, so MTHFR, this stands for uh, methylenine 
methylenine tetrahydrofolate reductase. So MTHFR. Um, so this is an enzyme or, you know, if you're not familiar with chemistry, enzymes are what we call helper molecules. Um, they are necessary for reactions to happen. So in order for, um, you know, to, for folate to convert homocysteine, which is the amino acid, to methionine, another amino acid, you need this MTHFR, this enzyme to help that reaction actually happen. So when you have a mutation in your MTHFR enzyme, meaning that it doesn't form properly, um, this can slow down that process of converting homocysteine to methionine. And again, it's not, and it's not really just only folate that we're talking about here. Um, having a MTHFR mutation affects pretty much every process in your body that uses methylation. So methylation is a term that's been been thrown around a lot lately. Um, it's methylation is essentially a type of reaction where you, where you remove a methyl group or you know a bunch of carbon bonds from one molecule and transfer it to another. So that's all that methylation is. But you need you know the right enzymes and the right processes to make that happen. So if you have a something wrong with that enzyme that helps remove the carbon from the carbon group from one molecule to another, it's not going to be as efficient. It won't run as smoothly. Um, and you can just have, you know, issues with that. So there are thousands of processes that use methylation, um, including the assignment of certain immune cells. So, you know, differing one immune cell from the other, uh, creating neurotransmitters, which are important for um, nerves and brain function, um, detoxification, so helping your body and your liver get rid of, of chemicals and toxins, uh, histamine clearance, hormone clearance, and many others. Um, so even if you have a specific mutation, and you can do this through genetic testing, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that that, that what we call a SNP, um, is, is not turned on, right? So your genes can be turned on and they can be turned off. So you could have a mutation, but it's not actually a mutation that's turned on, right? So you could have this SNP, but you're still functioning normally and not having any side effects. Um, so, you know, then the question comes up, should you get a genetic test for, you know, to see if you have this mutation? So, Again, genetic testing, again, opening a can of worms, it could, it's really a personal preference. Um, but I, I would say, if you are experiencing issues with autoimmune disorders specifically, people with autoimmune disorders tend to have, um, there's a higher incidence of these uh, mutations. Um, so if you have a disorder and you're not responding to diet, lifestyle, you know, medical treatment, um, you know, if or in general, if you're experiencing things like depression, anxiety, fatigue, brain fog, low energy, hormone imbalance, infertility, or having trouble detoxifying and have, you know, have tried all of these things and not, you're not getting better, then it's maybe something to consider. Um, so that being said, you know, why this is important is because if you have an MTHFR mutation um, and you take folic acid you're not going to be able to convert the folic acid to a usable form. So um, so if you know that you have this mutation, um, I would definitely recommend that you take a methylated folate. And it's usually listed on the supplement bottle as L-methylfolate, 5-methyl-THF, um, L5-MTHF, or 5-MTHF. Uh, so, you know, that's just one thing to consider if you um, if you know that you have this mutation or you know you're having kind of, you know side effects from uh, you know other things going on um, and I you know I wrote about this in my if you check back on my Instagram posts um, I have a picture of a supplement bottle that has the methylated folate in it um, and there's many different types of mutations too that I'll mention that so some of them are more severe than others um, so again it just it's something to consider. Uh, so just to recap, um, today we discussed the importance of folate 
its role in managing inflammation, and we just kind of touched the surface of MTHFR mutations. Um, I did a blog post on Wednesday that I posted on my website, annierubin.com, where that talks a lot more about folate, MTHFR, and it has a bunch of resources. So if you're looking for some more scientific-based um, reports and um, articles, you know, definitely go to my blog and you can check out the links there. Um, for those of you who would like more help with managing your autoimmune disease, digestive issues, or just reducing inflammation, um, I would love to chat with you. I'm offering free 15-minute discovery calls to chat more about your goals. So if you can go to my website, that's in my Instagram bio or on my Facebook page. Um, you can also click on the link in my Instagram bio that will take you directly to a booking site. So you can do that. Um, and that's, you know, a great, that's the easiest way to reach me. Um, I also have a free ebook on my website right now that you can grab. It's called My Favorite Autoimmune Protocol Recipes. Um, it's super handy to have this time of year because we're all trying to, you know, make improvements in our diet because it's January. Um, and then lastly, in my Instagram bio, you can sign up for my weekly newsletter. I put a lot of great information out there for managing um, inflammation with food and lifestyle. So you can try it. You can unsubscribe anytime. You won't hurt my feelings. Uh, so thank you again for joining me today. Uh, catch me next week, same time, to learn another interesting link between food and autoimmune disease and inflammation. Have a great day.